Hi, I'm Enrique from Maven Analytics. We've got Alice here, our data science instructor at Maven, who just launched a new course on unsupervised learning. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So Alice, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself or tell us a little bit more about the course. Sure. This is the fourth course in our Python for data science learning path. And it's the course I'm most passionate about. So I'm very excited to talk about it today. All right. And let's just start with just what is unsupervised learning. I, I, I know that machine learning in general or data science can be kind of a daunting topic to people to even just approach, especially with words like unsupervised <laughs> coming yeah. into play, which I think can just be scary in general. So tell us a little bit more about just what unsupervised learning is. Sure. So unsupervised learning falls under the umbrella of either machine learning or data science. So using computers to make decisions. And with unsupervised learning, I would say it's lesser known because with machine learning or data science, you're always thinking of like, like making predictions, but unsupervised learning is the part of machine learning where you not, you're not making any predictions. All you're doing is finding relationships or patterns in your data. And that can lead to some pretty interesting insights. I love it. So yeah, it kind of seems like it, it's more about the learning, right? And not so much about, I like it, it kind of true. Yeah, it's just like you have a ton of data and you're trying to figure out like what's happening in this data. You know what I mean? And can you be a bit more specific about where or how unsupervised learning is useful? Sure. So some of the main topics within unsupervised learning are things like clustering or dimensionality reduction. So clustering, I think, is the most popular one. So just think of it like you have a lot of data points and you want to find groups in your data. So that's clustering. And the one that's lesser known but is really useful is called dimensionality reduction. And that's basically you have a ton of columns in your data and you reduce it into fewer columns. And that could be really interesting. So imagine if you have 20 columns in your data and you want to visualize it in one scatter plot, you can do that using unsupervised learning and more specifically dimensionality reduction. Nice. And so does that kind of tie into like the reason why you wanted to create this course, just to kind of shine a light on the topics outside of clustering, maybe, or even within clustering? Like what 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 was the main driving force uh, behind you creating this unsupervised learning course? Well, I'll say I've been teaching data science and unsupervised learning for the past decade. And I find that a lot of students, they'll learn the algorithms, like they'll learn the clustering algorithms or the dimensionality reduction algorithms. And they'll be like, OK, I implemented it. I'm done. And then they all kind of freeze and they're like, what do I do next? And so I've just had this conversation of like, once you implement your models, like how do you interpret them or how do you make sense of those things? and apply them to your business problems. I've had that conversation again and again. And I just find that it's not taught in many unsupervised learning courses out there. So I was like, this conversation that I've had 50 times already, let me just put it into a course. And so that's what this course really is. It's just talking about the algorithms and then like how to interpret the algorithms. So um, I find that that's really the most important part of unsupervised learning is it's less about the technical details and it's more about what, like, what is, how is this useful? How does this make sense? And I know you already touched on this, but can you be a little bit more specific about how or what sets this course apart from other similar courses out there? Yeah, I would say that um, it's really about like going through the end to end process with unsupervised learning. Like a lot of classes out there, you'll see it's just about the theory or it's like they quickly implement something in Python. And those are both useful, but if you're a beginner or even if you're a seasoned data scientist, like those are good tidbits for you, but you really want to know like, okay, I have this question. How does the theory work? How do I implement it? How do I interpret it? How do I apply it? And then along the way, like if you make mistakes, how do you identify those mistakes and how do you tweak it? Like I go through many iterations of that in this course. And so that you get a better sense of just how this could be useful for you. Because I'll say one more thing here. Like, I think that a lot of times with unsupervised learning, people will apply these techniques and then they don't find them useful. So they'll be like, oh, this isn't, th th I don't need this for my project. I, like, I don't need to learn this. But unsupervised learning is so amazing and it's so powerful. And I just, I use it all the time. And I feel like if you can see the practical applications of it, then you'll just incorporate it into your workflow. Like, I use it. I just use it all the time. Like, for example, I'll say in my first, one of my first projects when I started as a data scientist was I was working in the automotive industry 
And um, my manager was like, okay, we have all these different makes of cars. How do they relate to each other? Like for each make, what is their top competitor? So I took all these survey results with dozens of columns of data, and then I just put it onto a visualization. And you could clearly see clusters of luxury vehicles or American vehicles. It was just, it was really interesting and just useful all within one little plot. So I forget the original question, but I, I would say I love unsupervised learning. And this course just goes through that process again and again. You can just kind of see that shine out of you. Um, but no, the original question, which you answered, which was what sets it apart from other courses, which to your point, you know, it's it's going through that end to end process. And I know you mentioned an example from your past work as a data scientist. Can you talk about an example with, from within the course in which you go through that end to end process so that maybe students can, can hear about it? Sure. So within the course, there are multiple of these examples, but I would say the final project I find really it, it feels very satisfying once you've finished the whole project because it takes a lot of different parts from unsupervised learning. So the idea is you're looking at employee attrition and you're trying to find within a company, what are the different clusters of employees? And for each cluster, which employees are leaving, which employees are staying, and then you can explore that more. So for that project, you start by clustering your employees. And then after you do that within each cluster, you name the cluster, you find, you do EDA and you find different patterns within each cluster. And then after you go through that first round, you're like, oh, wait, these clusters can make more sense. And so then you go back and you redo the clusters, you revisualize it. And then after, um, after your you know, final uh, step or final round of modeling, then you dive into each cluster and you make recommendations for how to improve, improve employee attrition within each cluster. So. Um, it's a lot of back and forth, but then the very end, it's a practical application. But yeah, and I, I know there. I know I've been kind of playing the role of the interviewer right now. I know you had some questions for me. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, it, we kind of play sort of like a teacher to student relationship. You know, going from 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 you to me. As I uh, I didn't introduce myself as the learning experience designer here at Maven, but in a nutshell, what that means is I just help our instructors create their courses, which means that. I just learned a lot as I helped kind of worked through uh, this unsupervised learning course with you. And I know you were, you were curious about some of the conversations that we had as we were going through that and kind of wanted to share those conversations uh, with folks online as well. Yeah, because I, I think, Enrique, you come from such an interesting perspective. Like you're an awesome data analyst, phenomenal at data visualization, and then you're just at the right level to learn data science. So my main question for you is, before you started this course with me, like, what did you know about unsupervised learning? Oh, two answers to that. Before I started this course, I knew some because we'd already done previous courses from this series. Before I started this, you know, Python and data science or data science and Python path for Maven, if you had mentioned the words unsupervised learning for me, I would have frozen. I would have not known anything. Uh, before we started this course, I would have said it's, you know, working with unlabeled data because we just work with labeled. Very data technical description, yeah. Um, but other than that, not much. Okay. So then as you were developing the course, well, like how did your perceptions of unsupervised learning change? It, I, I don't know. It's just the word unsupervised that kind of seems like it's like just a little bit more magical, uh, in like the machine learning sense of it. And it, it makes it seem like it's harder and less relatable than supervised learning. And the harder is always relative, but I think it was a lot more relatable to just data analysts in general uh, than supervised learning is because it's the end game is just the same as data analytics, which is just like learning, um, like finding these insights and patterns in the data. It's just using machine learning algorithms, which analysts aren't familiar with. But if you do have those like in your toolbox, I think it just makes you a much better analyst, not just, you know, now being able to call yourself a data scientist because you're using, you know, sklearn uh, or Python or anything like that. So I, I was very pleasantly surprised at how approachable or how, how much I could start to implement unsupervised learning in an analyst role, for example, which is something that completely took me by surprise. So what's an example of something that you were able to do? Um, yeah, after learning? Yeah, I think. 
again, maybe in, if you had asked me what unsupervised learning is again, I, I clustering is what first comes to mind. It's like, you know, you're, you're grouping things and clustering is great, but I was most surprised by dimensionality deduction because at first couldn't really understand the use case for it. Like I could see, yes, yes, you have a lot of columns, now you have fewer, like maybe a little bit less analysis paralysis, but then these columns like have no like explicit meaning anymore and you kind of have to find it. So you're adding a little bit of work to reduce work. So it's a little bit confusing and the words dimensionality reduction don't help. Um, but I was like the fact that the end result can be something as simple as a scatter plot was kind of mind blowing for me. I remember as when we were getting started, you would say like, oh, the application is just data viz. And my, my thought was just, no, that's not, that's not machine learning. You know, like that, that can't be true, but it is. And, and, it, and again, it, it just makes it so practical. And it's something that I've actually started doing, um, you know, in just personal projects, like working on Makeover Monday charts. Um, you'll start with these five columns and you're like, oh, could I like, could I, you know, use PCA uh, to maybe reduce those and then visualize them? And then will my scatter plot still make sense? And can I like, present that to someone then have them understand it. And you can, and it's amazing. Uh, and then you can start to tie that back into clustering because you can now visually in two dimensions, see clusters in your data. And then you run it through a clustering algorithm and it will like label them exactly as you would have thought you it would based on what you're seeing, which is just, it, it is very satisfying. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> I know, it's that's not the... magic. It's just, yeah. And you just like as you start learning how these algorithms works, it makes a lot of sense. But I, I completely agree with that. Like dimensionality reduction and PCA, that that's really the hidden part that people don't know about. But then once you know about it, you're like, why don't I use this all the time? And I use it all the time. And I think what's really cool is because you're an Excel super user, when you started trying out Python in Excel, like that really blew my mind because that was when you took these pretty complex concepts, but then just implemented them in a few lines of code. And then you got these great Excel visualizations from it. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I do think one other thing I learned about it, um, which you always hear, uh, and I know we have an entire course for it that kicks off the series, which is just a data prep and EDA, but like, it's so important. Those initial steps are so important. Like the, even just like selecting the right features or columns or variables to include when you do the PCA, because granted you could have 50 columns, but you wouldn't normally want to choose all of them and try to narrow those down into two because some might not make sense or they might be correlated with another one. So don't include all of them. Um, but you kind of, because you see machine learning as this just like magic wand that will magically get you right results, you think it doesn't matter what you put into it. Um, but just like, as I started playing around with it in Excel, like my first attempt was just like, all right, let's just do Tsni. And then I got just another cloud of data and I thought, oh man, like maybe it doesn't work for everything. But I started to get a little bit more deliberate about what to actually include. And then you do get these patterns that pop up because you, again, you have to go through that cycle of like, all right, this doesn't work. What can I try to fix? What can I, you know, engineer? Now we can use those words now. Uh, and, and it, and it, and it it does make all the difference. And it's something that if you can't, if you don't have that interpretation part of it, where you can see that oh, this result like isn't good, uh, even though I just put it through an ML model, like you, you would just never go back to kind of rework uh, and then end up improving it. You just kind of take it for granted. Like, yeah, I mean, I applied a clustering algorithm. This is as good as it gets when, it, you know. No, I, I love that you bring that up because I think that's, I, I've taught unsupervised learning to a lot of students and at the end, a lot of people say like, there's so much creativity involved with unsupervised learning. It's like, it's, it's like with supervised learning, when you're making predictions, it's really all about just like getting that best metric, right? You want to like get the best model, highest accuracy, whatever. But then when you're doing unsupervised learning, it's like the art and the science, like you really have to understand your data. You get to play around with it. You have, you have have like a feel for like what you think the end result should look like. And then you try to work with the data to either prove or disprove that. So yeah, it's a lot of creativity. I, I find it's the most fun part of data science. Yeah. And again, like for me, it's the one that prediction is sexier sounding maybe oh, for sure, like, yeah. unknowns in the future. But like, this is just like, I just feel like every data analyst that just wants to be a data analyst should still know unsupervised. I love that. Like, I love that that's your takeaway after developing this course, because 
I agree. I feel like, yes, analysts should just use unsupervised learning. We, we, we should create some more content on this. Let's, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Um, well, all right. I, I don't have any other questions unless you, you have some. Well, okay. I, I just have very strong feelings that everyone should just take this course um, and this series in general. Um, yeah, it's, it's great content, uh, like everything we do at Maven, but this is just like, feels like a new frontier to me. And again, to your point, like with all these integrations now with the Python and Excel, and now, I mean, even Power BI that has these, um, I know you can do Python visuals, like. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Applying like dimensionality reduction in Power BI. I, I mean, I haven't explored that yet, but it just, it opened up a lot more interesting doors than I originally thought. Uh, it, for me, it's, oh, if you're going down the ML path, like kind of like boxes you in a little bit, but that's okay because that's where you want it to go. But really it was just like expanding, which is. Yes, I love that. I love like when people want to learn data science more and specifically unsupervised learning. It's like people don't know about it, but it's so awesome. So that that's great. And yeah, just one more shout out for the course, data science and Python unsupervised learning. Check it out on Maven Analytics. Thanks, Alice.